Now the last thing I want to show you uh, in decorative stitching is how to do free motion stipple quilting. Um, a lot of people like to use their uh, sewing machines to quilt and you can do stitch in the ditch and all of that just fine. Um, but uh, some people really enjoy doing free motion quilting. So there's some uh, changes that we're going to have to make to the machine here. But the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go back and select my woven medium fabric and stitch number one. I just want a straight stitch for this. Um, the next thing I need to do to do free motion is pull off the accessory tray. And there's a little groove down there you can just grab to pull off. And I'm going to turn the machine around again so that you can see this. On the back of the free arm is a little white button. And I'm going to push that button over to that direction, <laughs> whatever direction that is. I guess that's the left for you. What that does is it lowers the feed teeth on the machine. Uh, when I'm done, we'll want to make sure and move that button over to the back over to where it was originally. And then I'm going to turn the machine back around. Um, I'm going to put my um, accessory tray back on. There is, for those of you who do free motion quilting um, and know that this is useful, there is an extension table available for this machine that will give you a larger working surface. Uh, I don't have that here today. That's an optional um, purchase. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, this is the U foot. I'm going to use this foot for the free motion quilting. And to, in order to use this foot, I actually need to take the ankle off of the machine. So, um, and we're also going to change a screw here in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my long screwdriver to open this up. And I usually loosen it and then get my fingers in there. But for those of you whose hands might not fit so well under there, uh, they've given you a nice long screwdriver so you can reach in there. Um, I think for a lot of people, a magnetic screwdriver is a little bit easier to use because it'll hold that um, screw on the end of your screwdriver. So you can either check out a YouTube video on how to mag magnetize your screwdriver or get one that's already magnetized. Now the other thing I want to do before I use this foot, the machine comes with a needle screw. Usually the needle screw, this very small needle screw is on the machine when it comes in the box. I actually am going to unthread the, this and I'm going to replace that screw with this wider screw. The reason is that this foot rests, this part, arm of this foot rests on top of that needle screw and if you don't have the wider needle screw on there, it could potentially slip off, uh, which would cause all kinds of problems. So we just don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take my longer screw again and I'm going to find my multi-purpose tool to hold onto my needle so it doesn't fall into my bobbin case. I'm going to just kind of hold that out of the way if I can. And I'm going to unscrew this needle screw. Now when I do this, I, first time out of the box, I take this needle off, oh, this little small screw off and put it in the um, storage bin and never use it again <laughs> because I don't like doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in that little bag that came with it. I'm going to take the larger screw, put my needle back in so the flat side of the needle goes to the back. And then I like using this multi-purpose tool because it makes it so I can get my needle all the way up where it needs to be. And then I'm going to start this longer screw with my fingers. If you need to, you can start it with a screwdriver. And tighten that up. Make sure that needle's in there tight so it doesn't fall out. You don't want to over tighten it though. You know, get it tight, but don't strip it. Okay, and there you go. There you go. We've actually had people who have stripped those screws, and it is quite a repair to do that. Now, I think the easiest way 
to um, put this foot on is to come at it from the back and I was just lining up the hole where the screw for the foot goes in, for the ankle goes in. And I'm going to start that with my hand. If you have to start it with the screwdriver, it'll be a little bit harder, but you can do it. And then I'm going to screw that in nice and tight too. We also don't want this coming out. That could cause some serious problems. So I'm going to get it a little tighter here and then use the screwdriver to tighten it. So forgive my hands for being in the way there. All right, now we're going to tighten it up. So just make sure it's on there securely. Okay, now I've got to finish threading my machine again. So I'm going to put my thread in through the guide, take my needle threader, bring it down, make sure it's lined up right. I think my needle's maybe not quite in the right position. So what I did was push the needle down position and then push it back up so that the machine will bring the needle back up to the height that it needs to be to thread the needle. I'm going to take my thread, wrap it around the outside gauge or outside guide through the center and thread it. And again, it, for best results, you want to take your thread and put it through the foot. So I usually need a pair of tweezers for this because somehow my fingers don't like to do that. Okay, there we go. All right, and we are ready to go. Now, one thing I do differently for this than for most sewing is I like to take my bobbin out. If I've cut my thread with the, with the scissors on the machine, it will cut it fairly short. I put the bobbin back in, make sure it goes into that tension. And this time, I just I don't cut it with the cutter. I just leave it out and then put the uh, bobbin cover back on. Now this is where you're going to take your quilt sandwich, you know, your three layers together. And I'm going to lower my needle and raise it up so I can bring my bobbin thread up to the top. This will give me a neater, nice and neater back if I can get it. There we go. Sometimes it's easier to move your fabric back out of the way to get that loop to come up. Pull on the loop from the bobbin and then line my needle right back up where I started. Now, I do like to use the needle down, stop with the needle down position on this particular technique, and then we can start sewing. Now, the thing about this free motion is that you're in charge. You are moving the fabric. The machine's not going to be moving it at all. Remember, we put the feed dogs down. So, um, it doesn't have any way to move the fabric for you. What I like to do, so, so basically to get a straight and even, to get an even size stitch, you have to move the fabric at the same speed and move the stitches at the same speed all the time to get a, an even stitch. So what I like to do is slow my machine down a little bit with the speed buttons. I don't know, probably right about there. And then use the start stop button that way, the machine's always going the same speed. The only variable I have is how fast I move the fabric. And I find that I get a much straighter stitch this way, or a much more even stitch this way. That's actually a little bit slow for me, so I'm going to speed it up just a little bit more. Whoops, wrong thing. <laughs> uh, speed, right there. Boy, there's my speed. So I'm going to speed it up. Uh, just take it down one notch and press start stop. That's a pretty good speed for me. And then you just move it around in whatever shape you want to move your thread in. And I think I just came unthreaded, so, or stitched over some thread there, because I was not concentrating very well. But um, that was me, whoops. I'm gonna cut my thread. Now I wouldn't do that either. I would normally bring my bobbin thread up at the end but because I had a spectacular fail, there we go, um, I let it go ahead and cut. So I don't know if you can see my stitches or not, but they're pretty even once I started using the start-stop button instead of my foot. So this is something that requires some practice <laughs> and some patience and give yourself a break. It's not going to be beautiful all the time until you kind of get the idea of how your 
um, how your stitches are going to work. 